everybody, my name is Charu Behel and I'm a consultant at EPMA. Today I'm going to talk about summary tasks and how to use them in Microsoft Project 2013. Summary tasks are a way to organize activities or tasks within your project. It helps you to create a high-level view of your project phase. Summary tasks are made up of subtasks and it shows the combined information. Now, there are basically two ways to insert a summary task within your schedule. Given here is the list of all the tasks that are part of my project plan. Now, the first method to insert a summary task is insert a normal task and give it a name. After that, you will select all the tasks that need to be the subtask under the initiate phase. Once you've selected all the tasks like so, under the task ribbon and under the schedule section, you'll be able to see two arrows, one to the left and other to the right. The left arrow is the outend arrow and it helps you to move a task one level up. The right hand side arrow is the indent arrow and it helps you to indent a task into a subtask. Now once I do that, you will immediately see the difference. How the sales handoff, project charter and kickoff meeting become the subtask and the initiate task becomes a summary task. Now a quick tip and the second way to insert a summary task is Select all the task names that need to be a part of the summary task and then under the task ribbon and within the insert section I will go ahead and click on the summary button and you see that how this summary task is inserted. Give it a name like so. Isn't it easy? Now let me go and insert my execute phase. And then sometimes you just want to convert a normal task into a summary task. So you just select all the tasks that need to be the subtask and simply indent them like that. So now we've seen all the ways to insert a summary task. One thing that you might notice is that how the font for a summary task is different than the normal task. It is bold. Another thing that you might notice is how the duration is automatically calculated. Sometimes it might be the summation of all the subtask durations but how Microsoft scheduling engine calculates is it takes the earliest start date of all the subtasks and the latest finish date populates it in the start and finish field and then the difference between the start and finish date is the actual duration. On the right hand side of the Gantt chart you might notice that the graphical representation of a summary task is a black rectangular bar. And you see how it is different from a normal task? A normal task is represented by a blue bar or a blue rectangular bar. Now, what if you want to see the overall information of your project? To view that, you simply go under the Format ribbon and under the show and hide section just select project summary task and you'll see at row 0 all the project information is automatically generated the stlc was my file name or my project name this is my overall project duration my project start date and my project finish date also, the graphical representation of a project summary task 
is that of a gray rectangular bar. Now, sometimes when you're showing your schedule to upper management or some of the major stakeholders, they might be just interested in the high level information. So to view all the phase information, you can simply go under the view ribbon and from the outline drop down, you can select level one. And you see what happens? You'll be able to see all the level one phases and your project summary task. So this is a very high level view. And what if you want more details and you want to show it to your team? Again, under the view and outline drop down menu, you can go and select all subtasks. And you see how the view expands and you see every detail. Now, next, I would like to discuss some of the leading practices. Now, the first one is that you never link your summary tasks together. That means you never assign a predecessor or a successor to your summary task. The reason you don't do it is that many times it is not the actual representation of your schedule or your schedule flow. And sometimes it might just create a circular logic, which you don't want. The second best practice is that you never assign resource names to the summary task. I will give you a quick demo of why don't you do that. Now, for example, it is very tempting for a scheduler to assign project manager to the initiate phase, thinking that the project manager will be involved in this phase. But how Microsoft Project calculates is that the project manager is involved within all the subtasks under that phase. But that might not be the case because a project manager might be just involved at the project charter level. By assigning project manager to the overall phase, you see how the cost is inflated to $13,120. Now, when I assign the project manager to the actual task where he's required, you see how the cost drops down to 9,120, which is the actual figure. So by assigning the project resources to the actual task, you will avoid any cost inflation and you will also avoid resource over allocation. So these were the some of the best practices. I hope I was able to help you with the use of summary tasks. If you like my video, please subscribe. You can also visit our website. You'll be able to find a lot of technical blogs related to project management, Microsoft Project, and Project Server. You can also download some quick reference cards. Thank you for watching my video. Have a good day.